Good morning, everyone. Good morning, brothers and sisters. We are grateful to have this uh, opportunity to uh, worship together. I know that um, it's not exactly what we would want it to be. We had plans of uh, continuing our Sunday morning service, and because of the prevailing circumstances, we've canceled service for a while. But I am really looking forward to service next Sunday morning. And I hope and pray that we will be able to do that. Uh, obviously, we all know that the coronavirus numbers here in Carroll County are going up. And uh, there's several been um, uh, hospitalized, and we're concerned about that. And we certainly need to be much in prayer about that. And it's uh, a serious problem here in our country. And we've all decided, come to the conclusion, that we just need to try to practice uh, some safer uh, measures, wearing a mask and socially distancing and uh, washing our hands thoroughly and, and just being practical. So uh, with that said, I'm, I'm thankful that God's grace is so good. I know many of you have been praying for me and I appreciate it so much. Uh, some of you know, I'm sure by now, most of you know that uh, I was tested for coronavirus and uh, three different tests came back negative and I'm thankful for that. I would have um, uh, thought with the symptoms that I had that I had it, but uh, anyway, I didn't, and I'm grateful. But uh, we do have some members that do have coronavirus, and we want to remember them in, in prayer. And again, we'll look forward to the first opportunity that we have to be together. I want to uh, give you some um, prayer requests here this morning before I begin my message and I uh, want you to remember these in prayer. Teresa Carter called um, or sent me a message rather that her dad and her stepmother both have tested positive for the coronavirus. Her dad is in the hospital and he is doing some better from what I understand. Uh, we want to remember uh, her sister also and her brother-in-law. They have tested positive for coronavirus and we want to remember them. And uh, we want you to remember um, Gina Collins. Gina is in the hospital at St. Thomas. Uh, some of her um, blood counts uh, were uh, out of order and needed to be adjusted, so they're there. And we're hoping that she'll improve soon. But remember Gina and Diamond in your prayers. Remember Deborah Bendel. Remember uh, Kathy Kathy. Uh, in your prayers. Remember Herschel Byers, Ella Carey, Wendell Carey. Remember Betty Reeves. Remember Velma Sue Prince, uh, Chris Bugle. Remember Susan Chandler. Remember Rufus Chandler. Remember Pam Kelly and remember Gary Renfro. And of course there are some revival meetings that are in progress right now and uh, we want you to remember those as, as well. And let's pray for our country. Let's pray that God will uh, grant us the healing that we need in this uh, time of, um, uh, of, of sickness 
and uh, let's pray that the Lord will just bless us spiritually as well. Uh, I thank you again for your prayers. Uh, I can't thank you enough for all that you do, and I appreciate every kindness. Uh, so with that said, I want to read a few verses this morning found in Psalm 118. Psalm 118, beginning with verse 1. The psalmist said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say, and this is repeated a few times here in this psalm, let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. And let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. I'm thankful, brothers and sisters, that God's mercy does endure forever. Uh, we are uh, saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are given mercy. Uh, and uh, I, I am so thankful for that. And uh, we believe that when we're saved, we're saved forever. Uh, God's grace uh, is sufficient for our every need. And what God does is perfect. What he does is perfect. Nothing uh, needs to be added to it and nothing can be taken away from it. And as the psalmist says, and it's repeated many, many times in scripture, that God's mercy endureth forever. The psalmist said, I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. And uh, listen to these next verses. This is what I wanted to get to. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. That's verses 8 and 9. Now, I want to repeat them. Verse 8 says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. And verse 9 says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Now, it has been suggested, uh, erroneously, I believe, that Psalm 118, verses 8 and 9, are the exact center of the Bible. And, uh, but I, I want to say that uh, that is just not exactly true. And one thing that we need to keep in mind when we read our Bibles, uh, that these chapters and, and verses and numbered verses, they were added much later uh, than the Bible was initially, or than these books of the Bible were initially written. In fact, of the matter is, I believe the chapters came first uh, somewhere about the 13th century A.D., and then uh, verses came later about uh, uh, the uh, 14th century A.D., and then finally numbered uh, verses came in the 15th century. So much, much later uh, than these books were actually written. And so uh, we, we need to keep in mind, I believe sincerely that the men who, who did this, the biblical scholars who, who did this, uh, did it with good intention. They did it with good study. And the divisions that are in the Bible are, are quite reliable. Uh, but at the same time, you know, um, we don't, and, and there's a lot of suggestion that there are uh, lots of, of numerical mysteries in how these verses and, and things are arranged in Scripture. But um, I want us to pay attention. And, and the title for my message today is going to be simply Common Sense. Common Sense. Now, Psalm 118 verses 8 and 9 may not be the middle of the Bible. But what they are, are common sense rules of thumb. Common sense statements. Uh, there's no secret. There's no mystery here in, in the numerical order of these verses. But the message that God's word has just on its surface uh, is the most important thing. And they're just common sense statements that you and I all need to take to heart um, in, in thinking about this subject today. Common sense. Uh, you know, 
there's a, an expression. These are rules of thumb. And uh, this expression, rules of thumb, it dates back to the 17th century as well. And it comes from the idea of measuring the width of things with your thumb or measuring the length of things with your thumb. And hence we get this expression, rules of thumb. It is a rule of thumb, brothers and sisters, that we should trust in God rather than put our confidence in men. We should trust in God rather than put our confidence in princes or someone who holds a high rank or a high station in life. Uh, we should put our faith and trust in, in the Lord. Common sense. Now my dad told me years ago, as, as kids growing up, my dad told me years ago that God gives us common sense if we just use it. And folks, I can tell you today that common sense is anything but common. And especially, I think, in the time that we're living in, uh, it almost seems like common sense has gone out the window. Uh, if, if you watch the news or if you listen to people uh, talk about uh, the things going on in our time, it just seems like people have lost all common sense sometimes. And um, we need to have some common sense. And I agree with my dad. God has given us common sense. In fact, the matter is, uh, Peter tells us that God has given us everything that we stand in need of for a life uh, uh, of godliness. And, and I believe that the Lord has supplied all of our needs and he's given us intelligence and he's given us common sense if we would just use it. Now, this week uh, on the, the weather forecast, I believe there's a hurricane perhaps right now bearing down on, on Hawaii. And in the uh, Atlantic Ocean, there is a tropical storm developing and it may develop into a hurricane. Also in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, near to Texas. I think they're suggesting that it might land somewhere near Corpus Christi. There's another tropical storm. And it's possible we have entered into the hurricane season, it's possible that these tropical storms might evolve into a hurricane. And while we here in West Tennessee, we live a long way from the Gulf of Mexico or the Atlantic Ocean, we know by experience that these storms can get so powerful uh, that they spawn numerous earth, uh, not earthquakes, uh, numerous tornadoes. And those tornadoes can in fact uh, affect our weather here. And, and very often we get a tremendous amount of rain in, in this area due to these tropical storms or hurricanes if they happen to strengthen uh, and develop into a hurricane. Well, you know, it's common sense, isn't it? that we prepare for uh, things that come along in life. The fact of the matter is I brought something with me today. Uh, many of you know that my brother and I, we were in the contracting business. My brother Randy and I were in the contracting business. And I'm not going to tell you about how to paint today. Uh, but what I'm going to show you here, the CDC recommends that we all have an emergency kit. Uh, we don't know when some crisis is going to come along in life. We don't know what these tropical storms might develop into uh, in the Atlantic Ocean or in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we don't know that they might get so severe that it will affect our weather here. And the fact of the matter is we've had some powerful, powerful rainstorms here and huge amounts of, of water uh, ha have, have fallen uh, here in this particular part of the country. We don't know when a flood is going to come. We don't know when a tornado or a, a terrible storm is going to come. And it's just common sense that we think ahead, plan ahead for every, um, not every contention, but, uh, but for those problems that we might face coming down the road. The CDC recommends that everybody ought to have an emergency kit. And this is one of the, uh, one of the best uh, containers, they say, that you can put a, uh, an emergency kit in. The fact of the matter is, you can buy an emergency kit already made, or you can do what I did, is just use a five gallon bucket it and put common sense things into your emergency kit. Uh, they, I have a bag here that's got soap, it has toothbrush, toothpaste, washcloths, uh, things of that nature, dish soap, uh, things that you might uh, come in, in need of. There's a flashlight, there's a transistor radio, uh, there's uh, uh, 
toilet paper, there's duct tape, um, there's band-aids, there's medical supplies and things of that nature. And you can put all of this stuff into a five gallon bucket that's watertight. And in fact, if you go on online, you can get a list from the CDC of things that you might put into an emergency kit and you can develop your own de depending on your own personal needs. Well, it makes common sense, doesn't it? We don't know sometimes when we're, our power is going to go out or we may be caught in the dark or we'll be caught in a storm situation and we need these emergency supplies for a short period of time. <laughs> Looking at the list uh, on, on the internet, if you're planning on a large uh, uh, crisis to come along, you'd almost need a 55 gallon drum. But I, but I said that to say this, no matter what crisis comes down the road, uh, no matter what preparation that we might make. And it makes common sense that we prepare for, for difficulties that come. And, and let me ask, ask you a question. Uh, I have a spare tire in my car. I have a spare tire on my truck. And, uh, but there are a lot of people driving around in cars with no spare tire at all. And you know what happens if you get a flat tire? You're just stuck, uh, not able to go anywhere. Well. I can't tell you standing here if there's any air in my spare tire on my truck or on my car, either one. Uh, I haven't bothered to check them. Uh, I bought the vehicles new and, and I haven't checked them. I don't know if they have air or not. Uh, and I know that's not common sense. Uh, so you see, I don't always use common sense, but um, we, should, we should check those things and we should have a spare tire and we should have contingencies for crises that come down the road. Well, it doesn't make sense. Uh, as a minister, I can tell you, I get phone calls all the time. People want to know, uh, uh, want me to solve their plumbing problems. Uh, people want me to solve their financial problems. People want me to uh, solve problems or, or to give them answers to problems that I'm just not qualified for. And brothers and sisters, it doesn't make sense, does it, that we would call a doctor uh, if we're having car trouble. It doesn't make any sense if we call a, an attorney if we have a fever, if we have a cough. It doesn't make common sense that we call a car salesman if we need legal advice or call a carpenter if you have plumbing problems. Uh, God gives us common sense. And common sense in, in God's word is just trusting in God, trusting in his word, relying upon those things that God teaches us in his word. Now, in the time that we're living in, uh, you know, the number one issue in our time is coronavirus. You know, it, it started early this year. We've been talking about it. We've been wrestling with it. We've been struggling with it. People have believed, oh, there's nothing to it. And, and I fell into that category myself at times. Uh, but obviously, there really is something to it. It's still here. We still have a problem with it. And we're still grappling with it. And it looks like it's going to be here for some time to come. Well, in the time that we're living in, Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, uh, the nation of China, and, and it's not my intention to, uh, to go all political here with this message, but in the times that we're living in, China is our nemesis. Uh, they are our rival country in, 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 this, uh, uh, in this climate, this political climate that we're, we're living in. And, you know, brothers and sisters, it just doesn't make sense, does it? That if this, if this country is our nemesis, if they are in fact a political and, and uh, economic rival, it doesn't make sense. It's not common sense that we should trust in them to make all of our pharmaceutical supplies, to make our personal uh, protection equipment, to even hold our national debt. But that's in fact what we've been doing. It just doesn't make common sense. And, brothers and sisters, I can tell you this too, it doesn't make common sense for us to trust in the CDC or the World Health Organization. Uh, you know, they're responsible. Our, our government and, 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 and uh, other, other nations fund the World Health Organization. They're responsible to help us to be ready for these kinds of crises, but they've left us exposed and unprepared for this virus, and we're all suffering because of that. It doesn't make make sense. It's not common sense either, brothers and sisters, for us to trust in the White House, 
to trust in the state house, to trust in the Senate or the Congress, the FBI, the CIA, Homeland Security. I don't care what organization, it's just not common sense for us to trust in them. But what God's word tells us is that we should trust in the Lord, that we should put our confidence in the Lord. In fact, Proverbs 3 and verse 5 says that we should trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not or rely not on our own understanding or our own strength or our own wealth. Um, it's just not common sense. Now, if I could put some context to this uh, psalm. Uh, this particular psalm, we're not given the author. Uh, the book of Psalms is the largest book in the Bible. And uh, I, I, uh, I came to the conclusion a long time ago, because it is the largest book in the Bible, we ought to pay attention to the message that, it, that is in it. And it is common sense. It is just common sense for everybody to put their confidence and their trust in the Lord. In fact, the matter is, the book of Psalms begins by saying, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. Uh, and, and, and that's exactly what we should do. Now, uh, we don't know the author of this particular psalm, but I'm going to say something about the author here in just a few moments if I can. But to give some context to this, in the book of Numbers, uh, God challenged Israel. He challenged Israel to number every able-bodied man above the age of 21. Uh, and I believe the count as Israel was about to go into the promised land, God challenged Moses to number all the able-bodied men in Israel. And the count of that number was 635 men of war. That's how it's designated, men of war. And the idea here is, brothers and sisters, that God wanted all of these men to be engaged in the battle that was just about to ensue. They were just about to go into the promised land. Uh, God knew it was going to be a, a challenge for them. And brothers and sisters, we are engaged in a spiritual warfare today. And this holds true with the church uh, of Jesus Christ in our time. God had them number all of the men in Israel. And there were 635 men of war. And God expected every one of those men to do their part, to, to, to be engaged in the battle, whatever that would amount to. Now listen. God told them that he was going to go with them, that he was going to fight for them, and we can trust in God to do that today. God is going to help us with the crises that we face. God is going to help us in the conflicts that we, that we face in, in our time. And we're challenged in these verses here to put our confidence in God, not to rely on men and not to rely on princes, uh, you know, but to rely on God. And so God had all of these men numbered and there were 635,000. Now that's a large army, but they went into, into the uh, promised land and God went before them. When they marched around the, the, the walls of Jericho and they began praising the Lord, the walls of Jericho collapsed. Israel had nothing to do with that. It was the power of God. And God was with them and God fought with them and he helped them to overcome all of their enemies. And we can trust in God to do the same thing. Now, God had them number the men of Israel in, in that time. In 2 Samuel chapter 24, David who had been chosen by God, who was a man after God's own heart, David numbered the, the, the people of Israel, the, the men of Israel, and that number totaled 1.3 million men of war. And I can tell you that God was not pleased with what David did. And the reason is, is because David was not trusting in the Lord. He was trusting in his own military might uh, to, to keep him and to keep Israel secure. And God was angered uh, and, 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 and was not pleased with what, what David had done. Now listen, as a young man, David went out to face the giant 
uh, in the name of the Lord. And he went with a, a, a slingshot, a shepherd's sling and five smooth stones. He didn't have a helmet. He didn't have a shield. He didn't have a sword. He didn't have a spear. He just had a shepherd's sling and five stones. And he went out and faced the giant and he killed this giant with the help of the Lord. He was trusting in God. But here later in his life, he numbered the, the men of Israel, 1.3 million men. And that's a powerful uh, army uh, under any circumstance. But God was not pleased with it because David was trusting in his own physical might. And, you know, we read about Gideon's army. God reduced Gideon's army from 32,000 men to just 300 men because when they won the victory, God wanted them to know who was responsible for the, the victory. And brothers and sisters, I can tell you, if we're going to win the victory in any circumstance, I don't care what kind of crisis or difficulty we're facing, if we're going to win the victory, it's going to be through the, the grace and the mercy and the power of Almighty God. Now listen, in the, uh, the New Testament, in the Sermon on the Mount, this is the first uh, sermon that we have recorded in the New Testament. It is the largest sermon that we have recorded in the New Testament. I believe it's the most significant sermon that we have recorded in the New Testament. And the Lord tells us in the conclusion, well, well first of all, it, the, the, the sermon begins with all of those beatitudes. Blessed is the, the, the man, uh, ble blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Uh, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for uh, they shall be filled. And folks, if we understand those blessings, if we understand those teachings of the Lord, we are truly, truly blessed. And the Lord concluded his sermon on the mount by saying that if a, a man will hear these sayings of mine and do them, he's like a wise man that builds his house on a rock. And it's just the same as, as what this psalm is saying. We should trust in God and not trust in men. We should trust in God and not trust in princes. And folks, listen, it doesn't matter if someone obtains a, a great station or rank in this life. It doesn't matter if they achieve a tremendous amount of education. That doesn't guarantee that they're going to be wise. And it doesn't guarantee that they're going to be responsible either. Uh, and that's why we should put our faith and trust in the Lord in times of crisis. I know we're facing this, this terrible virus in our times. We're hearing from this expert and this expert and that expert, this political leader and that political leader. And, 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 and what we have in, in, in this is confusion. And we need, by all means, to trust in the Lord. And the Lord tells us here, if we will hear these sayings of the Lord and do them. You know, um, we're responsible, every last one of us, to, uh, to read and, and study our Bibles. You know what? And, and even ministry, when I began reading this psalm, it says, let Israel now say God's mercy endures forever. That's the whole nation. And it says, let uh, the, um, uh, them now that, let the house of Aaron, excuse me, let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endures forever. The house of Aaron, they were responsible for the ministry. They, they took care of the spiritual matters in, in the tabernacle. And as, as, as the people of God and as the ministry, and then it goes on to say, let them that fear the Lord, let everyone that puts their faith and trust in the Lord uh, to, to, to realize that God's mercy endures forever. And all of us are responsible for trusting in the Lord. You know what, brothers and sisters? I hope you will not just believe every word that the preacher says. We, we're in danger if we take for granted that everything that the preacher says is true. You are responsible. You have, you have the privilege to have your own Bible. And you are responsible to read what it says. You're responsible to know what it says. Not only that, but according to the Lord's Sermon on the Mount, you are responsible to hear it and do it and apply it to your life. And in so doing, our, our, our house, our very life and existence is built on a solid foundation. Foundation. And the Lord uh, it, it, it revealed to us in, in that sermon, the storms are going to come. 
We're going to see storms. We're going to see crises of every kind. They're going to come, but praise the Lord, according to God's word, the house that's built upon the rock, that person's life that is built upon trusting and relying upon the word of the Lord, it's going to stand when the storms come. It's going to stand the trials of life. And, and God's mercy and grace and goodness they're going to see us through. Praise the Lord. We can have every confidence in the Lord. And it's just common sense. It's just common sense to trust in the Lord. David trusted in the Lord when he was just a young man growing up. And he went out and he, and he stood before this giant Goliath twice his size, maybe three times his size. I don't know. He was huge, but David wasn't afraid. He was trusting in the Lord. And when he trusted in the Lord, he was victorious. But when he began to trust and rely on his own strength, David got in trouble. And, and, and we'll experience the same thing in our time as well. We need to trust in the Lord. Now, I want to close here. I want to go back and read a few verses of Scripture from Psalm 116. Interesting, Psalm 118, it comes between Psalm 117, which is the smallest psalm in the book, and it's Psalm 119, which is the largest psalm in, in the book. Um, the, the book of Psalms, it, it, it is a, uh, it's a priceless treasure chest. Uh, of, of wonderful, just common sense uh, rules of thumb, you know, that we should trust in the Lord. The psalmist said, you know, the Lord is my fortress. He's my strength. I'm going to look to God from, uh, from uh, whence cometh my help. And here in Psalm 116, I love this. It says, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplication. And that is I'm referring to prayer. I love the Lord because he hears me. And praise the Lord, he will hear us, brothers and sisters. And lost friend, he will hear you too. Uh, because he has inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. And the psalmist said, the sorrows of death compassed me about, and the, path, the pains of hell got hold upon me, and I found trouble and sorrow. This psalmist was going through trouble, difficulty, uh, 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 an incredible trial. And he says, then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. And he says, gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low and he helped me. And he says, return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. I believe the psalmist is describing here what we experience when we get under conviction and we need to be saved. I felt exactly the same way. When I was uh, 10 years old, I felt the convicting power of God and I felt the fear of death and, and the pangs of, of hell surround me. I was scared to death, but I thank the Lord that I'd been given instruction from God's word to trust in the Lord, to rely upon him, to seek him with all of my heart. And that's what we do and we call on the Lord in, in, in prayer. That's exactly what the psalmist did. And he called on the name of the Lord and he said, I love the Lord because when I called on him, he heard me and answered my prayer. He delivered him from that terrible trial that, that he was in and he gave him wonderful spiritual rest. Brothers and sisters, and those of you who may be lost and, and, and without God, this is a time when we are in desperate need of common sense. You know, the Lord tells us in his word, he closes the book of Revelation with this promise that he's coming back. He's coming back. He made that statement 2,000 years ago or more. I'm coming back and I'm coming and, and I'm bringing judgment with me and every man is going to be judged according to his works. And friends, common sense will tell you, you need to be ready for that time. Just like having an emergency kit when the storm comes. We don't know when it's going to come. You know, we don't know if it will ever come, but it just might come today or it just might come tomorrow. And it's just common sense uh, to, to have something prepared and, and ready for when that time comes. And it's common sense that we're going to need to be ready and prepared when the day of death comes and we don't know when that's going to come. And it's common sense. It's just common sense to know that our Lord's coming is nearer than it's ever been before. We may be right at the very 
threshold of the Lord's coming. And we're to trust in the Lord and not rely upon men. And you know, in the times that we're living in, it doesn't make any difference how much money you have. It doesn't make any difference how many emergency kits you have. It doesn't make any difference if you make provision uh, to live six months, a year, or five years if, if the economy collapses. It doesn't make any difference. You need to trust and rely upon the Lord. He is our only hope in, in, in time of trouble. And uh, praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. I believe that we can trust in the Lord in this time of, of coronavirus uh, to take care of our needs. We need to be smart. We need to use common sense. Uh, we need to be safe. Uh, we need to do all of those things. But we need to trust in the Lord. And lost friend, more than anything else in your life, more than anything else in your life that you need. Yes, it's wonderful to have a good home. It's wonderful to have a good job and security. It's wonderful to have a good education. It's, it's wonderful to have a retirement plan. It's wonderful to have a contingency plan. It's wonderful to be prepared for some of the crises that are going to come. But nothing comes close to comparing how wonderful it is to be ready to meet the Lord. It's just common sense. You need to be ready to meet the Lord. If you don't know him, if you don't know him, if you've never experienced his saving grace, right now, wherever you're at, uh, and I don't know where you're at, you might be at home, uh, you might be out uh, somewhere else, uh, but wherever you're at, if, if, if God has touched your heart and you know that you need to be saved, I would urge you, strongly urge you to seek him right now and put your faith and trust in the Lord. Common sense. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in, in princes and in kings and princes, educated people. No matter how good intentions uh, that they might have, it's better to trust in the Lord. Would you trust him now? God bless you is my prayer. Holy Father, Lord, I thank you that you have blessed us so incredibly, Lord. I know we're going through a difficult time um, in our life. Uh, I've never seen anything like this, never experienced anything like it before. Uh, we've seen terrible, terrible crises come in this world. Uh, terrible wars, world wars, Lord, where it just seemed like the world was coming apart. God, and, and you mercifully and miraculously saw the world through those terrible crises. We've seen storms and uh, devastating earthquakes and, and all kinds of things and dreadful diseases, Lord, and you have seen us through them as well. We trust, dear God, we trust in you that you will see us through this. Help us to trust in you. Help us, Lord, to be more mindful of your word and, and, and the promises that you have made and, and to rely upon you more than we rely upon men. And especially, Lord, for those who are not saved, for those who don't know you as Lord and Savior, Lord, we pray that you would bless them and help them to trust in you in all things. We praise you, God. We praise you for providing for our every need. We praise you, God, because it is in you, Lord, that we find our strength, our hope, our salvation. And in your name and for your glory's sake, we pray and ask these blessings. Amen. Amen. God bless you all, and I will look forward to seeing you at church very soon.